Marth, Alm, Krom, and Lucina. What do they all have in common? Well, they're all wielders of the legendary sword, Falchion. Now, usually here on History of the Emblem, we talk about the games themselves, but this time I decided to try something a little different. Right now, we're going to dive into the lore of the franchise's most famous sword. Where did it come from? When has it appeared? What are its special powers? Can it really be used to cut cake? Party? Let's answer these important questions right now. Welcome to History of the Emblem, the legendary sword, Falchion. Starting off with the lore-wise origin, the Blade of Falchion is said to have come from one of the fangs of the goddess Naga. A long time before the events of the very first Fire Emblem game, Naga was the strongest member of the Divine Dragon tribe, and thus their leader. However, the Age of Dragons was quickly declining due to not only the growth of humans, but also for the fact that a lot of dragons had gone insane and the overall birth rate rapidly declined. The group of dragons that had gone insane seek to battle Naga and all of mankind, thus starting the War of Degenerated Dragons. To combat them, Naga made two things, the Shield of Seals, also known as Arcanea's Fire Emblem, and the legendary sword Falchion from one of her own fangs. The Shield of Seals held the degenerated dragons deep below the earth, and the legendary sword was created so that mankind could have a means of defense had something like the War of Degenerated Dragons ever happen again. And guess what? The Manichaeans were led to war with humankind once more, and the famous hero Anri, an ancestor of Marth, fought the war using the legendary sword. Upon his victory, Anri would later establish Altea and pass the sword down for generations. However, because plot, the sword would be stolen from the royal family and passed between two dudes, the most important of the two being Garneth, Fire Emblem's original bad guy. Of course, Marth is later able to reclaim the sword and defeat all of the bad guys. So after that, the sword is passed down through Marth's family for generations and generations. It changes hilts and decoration, but never the blade. It is immune to any kind of rust or damage. Eventually, Falchion is used once again, but this time by the first Exalt to kill Grima. Not much is known about this event except for those happenings, and also for the fact that the sword is passed down again for about a thousand years. The next time we see Falchion, it's in the possession of two people, surprisingly. However, it's still technically the same sword, just in different timelines. We see it in the hands of Prince Krom of Elise and his daughter from the future, Lucina. In this particular situation, Krom's Falchion is the legitimate one as far as timeline shenanigans go, despite Lucina's being technically more powerful. The thing that differentiates the two is that Krom's Falchion has the power to seal dragon gods, while Lucina's does not. This power is used at the end of the game depending on what decision the player makes. And that's the story of Arcanea and Elisa's Falchion. However, there does happen to be another blade that also has the name Falchion, and also can kill mighty dragon gods. It's the one from Valencia. A long, long time before the events of both Shadow Dragon and Gaiden, the goddess Naga lived as the strongest member of the dragon tribe. By her side, she had Duma and Mila, two dragon gods that you might recognize from Gaiden lore. Together, they helped the human race gain knowledge and power, eventually leading them to create the city of Thebes. However, growing more and more anxious of humans gaining too much power and staging an uprising, Duma destroyed the city, leaving it in the state we see it in in Shadow Dragon. When Naga learned of this, she was, well, less than joyful. Very upset. This might get unpleasant. And she and Duma fought viciously. Sleep well! Not wanting to let down Duma, Mila took his side and eventually got the both of them banished when the fight ended in Naga's victory. However, in the process of this extreme dragon battle, Naga lost multiple fangs, something that can coincidentally make really good swords. She gave one of these fangs to Duma as a consolation prize, telling him to name it King's Fang. However, because Duma is just really salty and kind of a jerk, he later renamed it Falchion, a sword that can be wielded by those with the blood of divine dragons. Sound familiar? Hilariously, all versions of Fire Emblem's Falchion sword look nothing like actual Falchion swords do. The designs are more similar to medieval knightly arming swords. Why this design was chosen instead of an actual Falchion sword, well, that wouldn't be very 90s video game of them, now would it? All joking aside, let's take a look at the aesthetic designs of all the Falchions shown in the Fire Emblem series so far. The blade on all the Falchions seem to be designed quite the same, as they all again look like arming swords, relatively long straight swords that end in sharp points. The difference in the swords is in how their hilt is designed. This is the original Falchion. The guard and pommel both look as if they're made of some sort of gold, and a red jewel sits proudly in the middle. 
This design is prominently used by the rest of the falchion designs, but things get really crazy when you look at Awakening's falchion. This does not look like the same sword, but it is. Awakening's falchion has an interesting hilt design as the guard is designed to look like the mark of the exalt. Decorating the guard once again are some glimmers of gold, but this time the grip is a dull red instead of black. The pommel is once again gold, but there's no red jewel to be found. Perhaps the first exalt wasn't a fan. I doubt it was Krom's decision, as the man seems to have no aesthetic taste whatsoever. Those in my group, the Shepherds, tell me to wear more dashing outfits. But I digress. Awakening's falchion also has a golden fuller, which extends up to the tip of the blade. This is a little strange, seeing as how sword fullers exist to make the sword lighter, and anything made out of gold would surely make it heavier. However, we don't know for sure how heavy Naga's tooth is compared to gold, and we don't know just how strong Krom, Marth, Lucina, and Alm are. And it's also completely useless to try to apply real-life logic to a video game. But then again, I digress. Of course we know the canon appearances of Falchion, as it appears in almost every game having to do with the continent of Arcanea. Let's talk about some appearances of the sword outside of the Fire Emblem series. Of course, the most famous non-canon appearance of Falchion is in the Super Smash Bros. series, where it's wielded by Marth in its Altaian form, and Lucina in its Elysian form. The Altaian form does more damage when the opponent is hit with the tip, while the Elysian Falchion doesn't do that. It's unclear why the change was made, but most agree that it was made to differentiate Marth and Lucina's movesets as much as possible. The Altaian form is also used to represent all of the Fire Emblem characters in the game, further exemplifying its icon status, sorta like the Master Sword from Zelda. And now, let's talk about... Kirby. Yeah, Fire Emblem and Kirby, never heard that combination before. But surprisingly, these series did overlap once before Super Smash Bros, and it was through the blade that Kirby Superstar affectionately calls... the Sword. Yeah, Falchion was present in the Great Cave Offensive, but in the English version it was incorrectly named Sword, as Nintendo realized that overseas fans wouldn't understand the reference in 1995. However, in the remastered Kirby Superstar Ultra, Falchion was correctly named as the whole spiel with Fire Emblem overseas had happened since. If there's anything that represents the Fire Emblem series, Falchion definitely takes the cake as that one thing people can recognize. Whether it's being wielded by Marth, Lucina, Almer Krom, the Divine Sword is always recognizable as a staple of the series, and for good reason, too. In a way, Falchion is just like the Fire Emblem series itself. The details and design may change with the passage of time, but at its core, it's still the same. Thanks so much for watching everyone, your viewership to History of the Emblem is much appreciated. Now I wanted to take the end of this video to announce something, but first of all, I'm very sorry about my infrequent upload schedule, which is something that can really confuse a lot of people because outside of these videos, Reddit, and the comment section, nobody really has any contact with me to know what's going on with the channel. So I've decided to brush up on my social media skills and get a Twitter account, twitter.com slash underscore Jamalex. You can follow me if you'd like, I'm basically going to be talking about everything Fire Emblem, talking with others about Fire Emblem, and seeing as how E3 is coming up, probably screaming about Fire Emblem 16. So please follow me if you want to scream with me. Anyway, that's all. Thank you for watching.